Hey now, before we get into the breakdown and review of the Acolyte Episode 5, Night, spoilers, spoilers. Wow, just wow. And for those of you who have been calling me a shill for saying positive things about the Acolyte, I know even an episode like this won't please you, and you'll find something wrong with some of the most radical Force user action we've ever seen, and to you I say... Welcome. Go ahead and throw those digital punches because what just went down in the Acolyte Episode 5 has to be some of the most top tier looking, feeling, sounding, and being Star Wars to ever hit a live action medium. Yes, the promise that this show's lightsaber duels would rival the Phantom Menace is true. In fact, we may have just been given some of the most brutal Sith on Jedi action to ever be featured in moving images. Sure, Vader's hallway scene is an iconic gem, but he's facing off against rebel schmoes without an ounce of the force behind them. So it's hard to compare what he did to what Kamir, aka the Sith Lord Stranger, did to fully trained Jedi Knights and Masters. And before I go on, I went with the Sith Lord title because that is what Manny Jacinto himself is calling him in a new interview that everyone should read if you like deeper insights into this sci-fi fantasy fiction stuff. So there's that sort of confirmation that Kamir at least thinks he's a Sith Lord based on how he's acting. Now one could also argue that he may be the first ever Knight of Ren, or at least someone that has influenced them down the road, because it's hard not to make that connection when he dresses like them, complete with a Ren type of helmet, bare tattooed arms, a red saber, and even more curiously, Kylo Ren's theme playing for him when he heals Osha. Like I said, maybe he is a Sith, he doesn't confirm in the show by what he says to Saul, but Manny, his actor, said so in an interview. Either way, the dude to me is now one of the most raw and badass dark side users of all time, and I can't wait to see where this character ends up and the impact he will have on the dark side down the road. Anyway, back to this episode's amazing force-fueled action and revelations. I'll touch on all the great action moments below in the top moments breakdown, but from the literal start of the show until Kamir gets oddly floated away by mutant pill bugs, this episode was in your face with top-tier fight choreography and swordplay. Sol, Jackie, and Kamir all stand out as having amazing action moments, and while the Padawan is no more, her courage in battle will not be forgotten by the fans. In terms of revelations this episode provided, the Kamir as Space Skimp was easily guessed back in episode 1 by me, but what I appreciate about the official reveal is that it still felt freaking legit and earned. Most of us knew he would be under the helmet, but the way it went down and how the official reveal was shown by having a dead Padawan slink away was brilliant and muted the fact that the reveal wasn't as shocking as many expected. The real mystery now lies with Saul's past, this darkness that Kamir knows he's bearing and why he's keeping it hidden. Was Kamir there the night of the Brendok fire and did he see Saul do something or is he just being Sithy and trying to twist things? Why does Saul keep saying he will reveal the full truth if he's already told it to Osha in the Order? Have they brainwashed Osha for real? Did the Jedi destroy the Witch Coven in cold blood, or was it a result of discovering their ties to the Dark Side and or the Sith via the unnatural conception of the Twins? Did the Sith, be it Kamir or his actual master, help to destroy the Witches too by framing the four Jedi? Hell, were the Sith there just like the Jedi to claim the Twins for themselves and then all hell broke loose thanks to Mother Coral siding with the Darksiders? These are the questions that make this show super thrilling to me and why I believe its narrative to be strong even though the serialized reveals may be too slow for some. The slow drip of the overall mystery being revealed is appreciated over here and I think that's why an episode like this pops so hard because we all got to release some of the build up from the show's first two acts as we head into act three. I will say that the episode did drag a bit something the series seems to excel at doing for at least a few scenes in each episode, during the May and Osha full-on reunion. That feeling of something being off was present that I felt in other episodes, so it could be performance, direction, the practical set, who knows, but the twins kinda suck some air out of this edge of your seat kind of episode. The whole parent trap thing is kind of surprising, and I'm not sure if I love it, but I think I will in the end. It sets up a ton of potential for the surviving main characters of Sol, Kamir, Osha, and May to get whole new perspectives on the Brendok incident in the current state of affairs. 
I could see Osha's time with Kamir leading to her discovering new truths that could have her possibly killing Saul unarmed and fulfilling the challenge Kamir gave her sister when she was his acolyte. While on the other hand, May, who probably still wants to kill Saul and expose the Jedi lies to her sister, may learn a few things herself about how she too was manipulated for another person or faction's gain and what that may do to her endgame plans. Listen, this episode was awesome no matter how you slice it, and I believe it sets up for a wild three-episode finish. So let's get into those top moments, which for the first time ever required actual clips because screenshots would not do them justice. Yeah, the opening fight against the Red Shirts with a cameo by Yord really set the hardcore tone for this episode's duels. From seeing Q headbutt lightsabers to short them out, to literally skewering two Jedi on his blade while decapitating them for good measure. I'm not sure any fan expected to see this level of brutality in a Disney-produced show, so good on Leslie for trying and Lucasfilm for letting the talent get their narrative way. I mean, if the double impale wasn't enough, you got a legit saber boomerang toss for the first time in live action. Yes, I know Vader throws his, but it doesn't come back to him, so this was better. Next is Padawan Jeki's amazing duel with Q. I mean, she shined in her win against Mei, but watching this child Jedi do her thing against a clearly much more skilled and diabolical warrior was something else. She showed guts, strength, and more skill with a saber than possibly even Padawan Kenobi. Ooh, I said it. The dual wield moment hit hard too and looked great flowing on the screen. This was just a fun fight to cheer for, even if it ended with my next top moment which is Kamir's official reveal via a three-stab saber kill on Jackie. At first, I thought he may have used some Tricata, the forbidden saber move, but it does look like he used his hidden blade to stab her repeatedly like a Padawan pincushion. It was just a brilliant visual way to confirm that Goofy Kamir was indeed behind the mask, and like he tells Sol, the Jedi would call him a Sith. Note that he didn't call himself that, so take that for what it's worth and maybe run with the Knights of Ren origin story potential, or you buy Manny, his actor, saying explicitly that he's a Sith Lord in an official interview. Either way, the reveal was perfect and solidified Kamir as one of the coolest Dark Side subscribers of all time. And the final top moment is when Saul dips back into the dark side and starts physically beating the tar out of Kamir with his bare fist to the point that he's more than ready to use his saber to end the newly revealed Sith Lord on the spot. If it weren't for Osha pulling in an Anakin and stopping Saul like Skywalker stopped Mace Windu, Saul would have let the darkness Kamir's no is in him out in full. So I still can't wait to learn what this master's keeping buried in his soul. Hey, eggs and references time. I had to confirm after seeing Q's helmet take saber blows and even short them out, but it does appear that his helmet and gauntlets are made out of cortosis, which is a metal that, like Beskar, can block high-energy projectiles and sabers, but it can also short-circuit sabers temporarily. I'm sure I'll get some heat or hate on this one, but I totally got Anakin coming to stop Mace and remind him of the Jedi way when Osha showed up and stopped Saul from killing Kamir like Windu wanted to do to Sidious. She didn't even have to say much, she just looked at him and he knew he crossed the line, so I guess there is hope for Saul not being an evil hidden Sith master, but he definitely channeled some dark energy thanks to Kamir's antics. Hey now, practical Jajaric, who needs a hollow projector version? And finally, Kamir did a force heal maneuver on Osha, and the cherry on top is that Kylo Ren's theme played while he did so. Hey, thanks for watching. Please consider subbing to the channel or becoming a member by heading down below. Click buttons and stuff. Feel free to comment. Would be cool if they were nice and productive, but I get it. Burn me down if it makes you feel better about yourself. There's always time for Star Wars time. And when you listen to the Star Wars Time Show, the Force will be with you always.